Welcome back to our series on creating a to-do app with Laravel. This is episode four in our series, so if this is your first video that you're watching, be sure to check out our previous videos. So far, what we've done is we've created a form that will allow us to add a new task, and we've also created an index route that will eventually show our created task, and we also have a home page as well. So what we've done so far is that we have this simple form, and you can see that when we add in some information, it'll take that information and it'll pass it through and then now we're just echoing that back to our browser so that we can see that we successfully received the data so in this video we want to actually try to persist the data into our database so before this video i created a new database using uh, sql pro um, this is i'm on a mac so this is my sql client all I did was I created an empty database called statcast to do's and that's going to be within my local database uh, so what I want to first do is I want to create a new table on this database. What we did here was we used Artisan, which is a tool set from Laravel, and that exposes a couple nice helpful tools, and we used that to make a controller for our app. So the next thing we're going to need to do is create a migration. So if we do PHP Artisan make, we can see what we have available to us in the namespace. So we can choose that we're going to create a PHP Artisan migration. So we'll do PHP Artisan make migration. And the way that it works is that we'll say specifically what kind of table we want to create. So we can say PHP Artisan create tasks table. And that'll create a migration within our database folder. So we could open that up in our code editor. So we can see that the files that have changed from our last commit is within our database folder and that's gonna be also within our migrations folder. And we'll see that we have now a new file here called create task table. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna help us create the schema for our new table. So by default, Laravel will also, uh, by default, Laravel will give you an auto incrementing column. So this will be assigning an ID automatically to all of the new rows in this table. When we save data to our table, it'll also timestamp that data as well. When we update these rows or create the rows, it'll store the timestamps. So all we're gonna really need right now is to know what our task is. So we can just create a new string, a var, car, a var char column, and this is gonna be called string, and we're gonna call it uh, description. So this will be the description of our task. So now we can just run artisan migrate, PHP artisan migrate. You'll see that I have an error because I haven't updated the information for my database. So in my .env file, I can just make it say statcast to do's. And my default username is root and I have no password locally on my local database. And actually while we're in here, I could just change the name of my app as well. So with the string, I can just say uh, statcast to do's and we'll use that in a bit. So all we need to do now is just run our migration. So to do that, we can just do PHP artisan migrate and that'll run our migrations. And you'll see that there are other migrations that ran. So our t uh, create task table migration ran successfully but you'll also see that we have a failed jobs table and a users table. And these are just default migrations that come with a standard Laravel installation. Uh, you can feel free to remove those or we might come back to these in a future episode. But for now, I'm just gonna leave them as is. And to show you what happened with our migration, uh, you'll see that there are no new tables just yet, but this is because uh, MySQL is not just automatically refreshing our database schema changes in the background. So all you need to do is change to one of these other like standard MySQL databases that come with the, with the MySQL installation. You can just change it to sys and then back to statcast to do's. And we'll see that we have our task table here created successfully. So you can take a look at the structure and this is the column that we created of description and it's a var car or a var char type and it has a max length of 255 and yeah, and then you also have that ID column that I was talking about. And this is an unsigned big int. And this is going to be our primary key. So this is going to auto increment. Uh, you'll see that it's going to auto increment. This is what the primary key does for you. Um, and it also says it auto increments right there. And then here's a history of all of the migrations that have run so far. 
and they'll run in batches. So if we do a couple more migration creations, uh, uh, like in all at once, it'll run in different batches and you can roll them back as well. Uh, but for now, we're not going to go too far into that. But just as a heads up, this is kind of a really powerful tool that comes with Laravel. And there's a lot you can do here. So you can also add dummy data during your migrations or roll them back or, you know, migrate a single migration at a time. Bunch of cool stuff. But if you want to see more about that, you can just go to the Laravel, you can just Google Laravel migration documentation and you can read up all about that. But to interact with this database table, this new one that we created on this migration, we'll need to create what is called a model. And if you want to find more information about models, you can just Google that as well. I would recommend reading up about this a little bit. A model is a representation of data within our tables or within our, within our database. So to create a model, it's pretty simple. Again, using Artisan, we can just do PHP Artisan make model, and we're going to create a model of a task. So far, we've created our migration. We also created a model. We've run our migrations and also connecting to the database. So the last step that I wanted to do is to store the data. So back within our task controller, uh, you can see that we have our store method that we created in a previous video. And all we were doing is returning all of the requests that came along with the post that we sent to our uh, controller method here. So one thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to show you one more time what happened. So you'll see that we're actually sending back raw JSON data and it's being encoded by my, um, by my browser, Firefox. And that's why it is displaying like this. So you'll see that the raw data is just a string, but this is raw JSON data. And there's also a header that's going to be um, to specifying that it is JSON. Uh, let's see. So yeah, you can see the content type is application JSON. And uh, I just wanted to show you that why it looks like this when I do a return request all. What I wanted to do is actually just show you the, um, like the more information about what the actual data is that we get along with our request. So Laravel also has another couple of helper methods that come with uh, handling data and data requests. So I just want to actually assign our request all to uh, a variable called data and then we well you can do another helper method called die dump so dd and then we can just pass in the data that we want to take a look at so die dump so it's kind of going to be like if you're familiar with var dump or print r if you've ever done that on a variable uh, you might be familiar with what with what might happen but die dump is something that comes with laravel and it's going to give us a bit more information so we can resend that data and we'll see that we have it as an array. So our data is a, an array and it's being represented as JSON. Uh, earlier it was being represented as JSON because if you just return the data request, uh, it'll be sent back to our browser as JSON. But um, there's a lot of neat helpers like that that come with Laravel. So all I want to do is I want to show you uh, the model that we created. Um, we have our task model that we just created and there's nothing that we have to include here but what's going to happen is this task model is going to be referencing to our tasks table and this happens automatically so what's going to happen what what laravel does is it takes a singular noun and it uh, pluralizes it so it adds in this case just an s to the end so if i did if i had a, ta a model of person it would look for it would expect a table to be created called people people um, but in our case we're just using task so we have we have a task table but we can specify more explicitly that our table is uh, tasks and I like to do this just because it makes it a little bit more readable um, but for now that's all we're gonna do within our task model but back in our controller I want to now store the data that we receive so I'll delete this data and I will also delete this. So the input from our form is sending us the data with the key of description. So we could actually store our new task using this information. So we could do task equals task and then I'm gonna auto namespace this so you can see at the top, 
task, and then we need its namespaced, our task model is namespaced to app slash task. So I'll just hit enter, and that'll automatically include that at the top. And it'll be task create, and then I'll pass in an array, and our description of our task is going to be the description from the request that we received. And now I can return die dump our task just to see what happens. So if I refresh this one more time, it'll resend the data and we should expect to see, oh, now we're running into another error. So we actually have to specify the task uh, description as being fillable. So another thing, this is another thing you can look up if you want to find more information. So Laravel will protect us automatically with our data um, that is being sent into our uh, controller methods right out of the box. Uh, it does this for us to make sure that our data that we're saving is explicitly what we want to be saving. So uh, something that can happen is people can pass along additional data with the request and that can also fill out columns in your database that you're not expecting to be filled by the user. So this will protect us from harmful content being sent back to us from the user. But we can look it up more with more de details here if we look at mass assignment protection. To fix this, we can specify which columns in our, row, in our database that we'd like to be filled out by the user. I can say protected, fillable, and this is gonna be an array of all the different column names. So I just want them to be able to fill out description. And that'll be it. Now if I refresh this one more time, it should save. So yeah, now we're seeing a die dump of that task that we just created. And if we go into our database and refresh our task table, we'll see that we have our, our new task created. And we'll see that we also have our timestamps that I was mentioning earlier that it was created at and updated at at the same time. So this is the most important thing I wanted to show you is that the ID is being created when our task is being created. So thanks for watching that video. That's gonna be it for today. So if you're looking to advance your career with programming or if you wanna just build a new skill set, or if you're just interested, uh, be sure to check out our tutorial videos on statcast.com. All right guys, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.